Hey guys, it's J19, brought to you in our video, and today we're going to discuss another episode of the Detroit Lions. We're going to go over like the draft picks they have chosen in the seven, in all seven rounds. We're going to go through what I think of each pick, what I think this Lions team is going to look like in 2023, and also talk about the Jared Goff situation that a lot of people are freaking out, freaking the hell, hell out about. So we're going to go through that, so if you guys want more Detroit Lions news, I'm probably going to cover Detroit Lions a little bit on my channel, but mostly about gaming, right? About gaming, you guys, if you guys know me, but I will cover my team um, for the NFL because I want to get into that kind of stuff. I really appreciate it, really like it. So, if you guys want more Detroit Lions stuff, if you're a Detroit Lions fan, if you don't know who Detroit Lions are, they are a, a National Football Team, uh, National Football League team, and they are like my hometown team. Uh, professional, it's a professional football game. Uh, a lot of people said, "How is it football? You play with your hands mostly." Yeah, um, the term is just like it's it's supposed to be like the you know it's the same name spelling as like the UK um, and you know other parts of the country's uh, football, which is soccer in America. I mean, you know, soccer wasn't first named in America; it was somewhere. But anyways, that's who we are. Um, we play football. Uh, my Lions do with 31 other teams. There's two conferences: the NFC and the AFC. But enough of that. Let's get right into it. So the first thing the Lions did, they had a 6th and 18th pick in the NFL, 2023 NFL draft. And everybody said, okay, they're going to stay put. They're going to you know, not trade back. They're going to get like the best, the best player on the board at that part, particular position. But the way things played out, Bryce Young was taken. You had C.J. Stroud taken. Arizona trade back to Houston Texans again. Texans come out, they take Will Anderson Jr., which is one of the best top defensive ends in the NFL, other than, I mean, in the, in the draft, other than Jalen Carter. Um, then fourth was, uh, Rich, uh, yeah, Anthony Richard, Richardson was taken by the Colts, the quarterback. And then they came down to Seattle. Seattle had a choice. They can get Jalen Carter. They can get, um, you know, um, Tyree Wilson, they can get like uh, a few other teams, a few other players, right? But they chose a uh, cornerback, Devin Weatherspoon. And I think at that time, Lions were thinking, that's our guy on the board. Like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of talks going around that Devin Weatherspoon was going to be the Lions guy. He wanted to play for, um, I forgot his name already. Uh... Number 31 on Detroit, uh, I forget his name, uh, Kirby Joseph, that's right. Um, anyways, uh, they used to play with each other in college, um, which is the next step down, if you guys don't know what college level is. It's a step down from professional football, um, but they used to play with each other back when he used to play in that team. So he, he wanted to play with uh, Kirby Joseph, I keep forgetting his name, but he's a one hell of a safety for our team. He, he led the team with like, Five interceptions. He's like, he's stepping up his game. He intercepted Aaron Rodgers three times last year. Like, no other player has done that since like Brian Urlacher, which he done that in like a ten-year career. Dirty uh, Kirby Joseph did that in one year, guys, in his rookie year. So that's impressive. But anyways, they drafted him. So Lions looked at the board and go, "Who do you want to get?" And everybody said they're gonna get Jalen Carter, right? I predicted that. I predicted they're gonna get Jalen Carter. They're going to trade back, and I mean, not trade back, but at the 18th pick, if you guys follow my other video, I said they're going to take uh, Devin Witherspoon, which it didn't work out. So they passed on Jalen Carter, and they said, you know what, we'll trade back. They trade back with the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals came up, got their offensive line. So I was like, okay, we'll wait to see what Detroit's going to do. So with the 12th pick in the NFL draft, they decided to draft a running back, and everybody flipped the lid. Everybody's like getting pissed off. It's like the same old Lions. Lions don't know how to draft. They don't know what they're doing. This is this is not going to be a great pick. You don't draft a running back in the first round because the you know the analytics say say so right in the past like 20 plus years like running backs selected in the first round do not mount to much like 75 percent of the time or something like that. It's, it's in the 70 percent of the time, but the other 20 some percent some of them do take off. Some of them have a prolific careers and stuff so Jameer Kibbs he's from Alabama Alabama Crimson Tide he's at 5 foot 11 200 pounds he plays 
wide receiver. He plays running back. He makes people miss. He's electric. He's dynamic. And uh, with that said, reports, you probably guys already heard this, but afterwards there was reports that, yeah, there's talks that Lions are looking forward to trading DeAndre Swift, their current running back. He's supposed to be like the 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 lightning, right? He's supposed to be the not the thunder, not the big powerful back. He's supposed to be like the lightning guy. He's supposed to be fast, supposed to be catch passes out of the backfield and take you fifty yards for a touchdown. But he was hurt all the time. And the Lions got sick and tired of it. It's like, look, we lighten your load, we try to make you stay safe and you're not stepping up to the plate like you're you know, it's like and then they trade him to the Eagles for a like a future like two years later like a uh, a fourth or fifth round pick it wasn't much and like everybody's kind of mad about that because why would you give the uh, the Super Bowl you know not winning but Super Bowl appearing team the Eagles more firepower well DeAndre Swift has shown that he cannot stay healthy right so that's the issue there so that's his role he's going to be the lightning to David Montgomery's thunder David Montgomery is going to get a lot of a lot of carries. He's going to carry a lot of load. And behind that type of offensive line we got, like which is like number two in the league, he's not going to have trouble breaking tackles and getting a whole bunch of yards. He's a lot. He's a lot better than Jamal Williams. And uh, just to uh, get back to the running back situation, like both Lions got rid of like they wanted to re-sign Jamal Williams, but he didn't. He, he signed a different contract, which is fine. You know, go, go ahead and, and have a different career somewhere else. Then DeAndre Swift gets traded. But both of those court running backs were whining on the mics when they got to their press conference of their teams, the Saints and the Eagles, and they were saying, oh, the Lions have, like, Lions have betrayed me, or they let me down. It's like, no, you, yeah, Jamal Williams, you broke Barry Sanders' record. We appreciate it. But most of those runs were inside the one-yard line or about the five-yard line out. He did have a couple explosive runs, which are super great, super fun. Like, trust me, your, your record in the books is never going to be forgotten. Thank you for that. But for you to say how the Lions betrayed you and, like, just treat you like crap, that's bull crap. We, we done everything we possibly could to give you a stellar career behind one of the best offensive lines in the game. It's like you being humbled. You decided to cut down Detroit Lions. And same with you, DeAndre Swift. How dare you with the Lions trying to make your make your life easier for you to make you not get hurt. You played hurt. You was hurt. You wasn't able to be available. Like, like every GM says, even the Lions says, the best ability is availability. So sorry about your loss. Hopefully you have a wonderful career in, in, with the Eagles for your final year in the contract. But look, we're moving on. No more of the Pat Patricia Quinn era guys. They're gone. We are all about Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. This is what this team's about. It's about grit. It's about tooth and nail. About biting kneecaps. It's about you know what? We're gonna play. We love the game of football. We're gonna we're gonna fight until the clock's reached zero, even if in overtime. You are gonna get the very best that the team can possibly give you. If you're not willing to fight back, you're gonna lose. That's the way the Lions are. So moving on. Um, and the 18th pick in the NFL draft, the Lions select linebacker from Iowa Hawkeyes, Jack Campbell, at six foot five, 246 pounds. Yes, people said, wait a minute, why would you get a linebacker that big? Like, this is not the Brian Erlacher era. Like, these linebackers can't be that big. They can't run. Our teams are more explosive. But here's the thing about Jack Campbell that a lot of people don't understand. He's actually one of those. He's one of those players that, a, he can run sideline to sideline. He's really quick, quicker than his uh, combine and stuff. The cone drills, especially, has showcased that he is quicker for a big boy. He plays with a lot of passion. He loves the game of football and he loves to tackle. This guy don't miss tackles very often, and he's good on the run support. He's good against good against the pass. He's even intercepted some passes. In the college, and he is a one of the best linebackers in the NFL draft. Like he was the top guy, and the Lions said, "You know what? We need to upgrade that linebacking position." Jack Campbell fits the fits the mold, right? It's about hustle, it's about playing with grip, it's about loving the game of football and giving it your all, one thousand percent. 
give it your all. And that's what Jack Campbell's about. He cannot wait to get back on the field and showcase, hey, this is why you drafted me, because I leave it all on the line. So that's going to be upgrade for the linebacker position. Now, Lions don't select for quite a while. They go their third in the second round, and they select a tight end, Iowa Hawkeyes, Sam Laporta. And everybody's like, wait a minute. Why didn't they get Kincaid? Well, Kincaid went to, I forget what team they went to, but it's another, uh, uh, it's another uh, team that needed a, another tight end. Um, so they went there. Uh, so they had a chance of, like, Michael Meyer. I think it's Michael, uh, Michael Mayer. Or, well, I think his ma name is Mayer anyways. And he was, like, one of the top two prospects. But the problem is, like, he wasn't a cultural fit. So Sam Laporta is that guy. He is the uh, college leading tight end of like the most missed tackles, uh, yards after catch or yak, um, and he's big. He's six foot four, two hundred and forty nine pounds. This guy is he's huge, he's bulky, but he's quick. Um, he's he's a lot quicker than people think, um, and he's and everybody's worried about him being oh no, here's another uh, here's another uh, Hawkinson, right? T.J. Hawkinson type player. No, I don't think he is. Is he's willing to miss he the thing about TJ Hawkinson, he doesn't make people miss. He's not like he's like he's not very reliable with his catching. He does drop the pass a few times. Like I saw him in the Vikings against the Lions. Like he dropped a few passes. It's like oof. Especially on critical third down. So Lions said, you know what we need a tight end. We you know we got three on the roster, but He's a he's an upgrade, right? He's gonna probably be the number one starter outside of Brock Wright and Shane Zustra and uh, James Mitchell. Um, they're all gonna share some carries, but share the load. But I think he's gonna be the receiving threat. He does have to work on his running block, run block a little bit, but that's teachable. So here we go. The Lions move up ten spots afterwards. They went from fifty-five. They trade with the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes. They trade with the Super Bowl defending champ. And as I, look, I was looking at the draft, I like, wait a minute, where did the Lions go? This was draft number 55. No, they traded up with, I think it's with uh, the Chiefs. Or they might have traded with the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, that might have been a Green Bay Packers pick. But they went from, they went from 55 to like the 45. They, yeah, they traded with the Packers. That's right. Packers went back to 55. Or something like that. I don't remember that. But anyways, they draft the best defensive back in the NFL draft, Brian Branch. This guy, I watched his highlights. He smacks people. He hits tackles hard. He don't miss, hardly miss tackles. He's good in the pass game. He's good in the run run game. He is the overall. He's a very smart, uh, crafty player, uh, defensive player, and he's very, really super good. Like everybody's like shocked that wait a minute. Detroit just traded up and got this guy. He's like, holy crap. Like, yeah, they're not playing around. They want to boost up that defensive back. How do you do that? How do you stop, help stop the run? You play him and, like, up front. He's like a he's like a roaming, like, uh, safety come up to stop the run. There he is. He also play in the backfield on the back end. Now, the Lions do slide at the 68th pick in NFL draft. Oh, anyways, Brian Branch is six foot, 193 pounds, so he's actually a pretty, pretty decent side guy, you know. Um, so, anyways, this is a big one. This is where a lot of people are like saying, "Whoa, this is a really good pickup." Uh, out of Tennessee Volunteers, the Lions have select quarterback Hendon Hooker at six foot four, 218 pounds. This guy was leading the leading the college ranks of potentially being a Heisman winner. Like he was, he's he's playing one of his best footballs ever on a team that wasn't that great. Like they were a good team, but he made that offense explosive, dynamic. He can run the ball. He can talk, throw the ball deep. He can do a little little bit of things. Now the only issue with him is yes, he's a little he's a little you know he's only 218 pounds, but the other thing he was he got hurt, so he was not drafted in the first round. Like a lot of people say, hey, if he didn't get the ACL injury, he'd be He'd be, a, he'd be in the first round pick. He, like somebody like Tennessee or somebody would have picked him up. Um, but, or even Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay needs a quarterback. We're not here for that. But anyways, it's like, it's just crazy how like the Lions picked up Hendon Hooker. And immediately everybody's went, jumped the ship and it's like, 
yeah, this is this is going to be his replacement for this is a replacement for Jared Goff. Jared Goff is is time his time is limited. Like he messes up a little bit in this in this week this uh, season, he's done. Like Lions are just going to cut him loose and just have um, just have Hendon Hooker play, and that's not that's not what uh, Brad Holmes is about. Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell have said for months, for weeks, that. Jared Goff is our guy. He's our starter. We love we love Jared Goff. Like he he played he balled out for us. He, he's he's a leader of this football team. He's a leader of the offense. Like your your quarterback, your head coach, and your GM are not saying that just smoke and mirrors. And they also said that that we need to address the quarterback room. We need to address our backup quarterback op, uh, position. Was that how they do that with Hendon Hooker? He don't have to rush back. He take his time, get his knee feeling better, heal, and then dive in the playbook. Get get accustomed to it. Ask Derek Goff a whole bunch of like, hey man, hey, like, how do you read this? How do you read this defense? What? Do, how do you attack this defense? Like stuff like that. Allow him to get healthy for about a year or two. Let him just get accustomed to the offense because if Jared Goff goes down with injury, then yeah, you do want Hen and Hooker to be able to come in because let's face it, Nate Subfield is a good, he's a good quality like. Third stringer, or maybe just like a backup if you really need to, like emergencies. But let's face it, he needs somebody to come in that can play right away, like when he gets accustomed with the offensive playbook, and that is going to be Hendon Hooker. That's what his role is. He is going to be a good backup for Jared Goff. Um, and then we move on to the 96th pick, and the Lions move up quite a bit. They move back into the third round, and they give up. Like two sixth round picks, even like I think a fifth round pick, and everybody's like, "What is Detroit going to do here?" They finally address the uh, the defensive line, the the middle, the defensive tackle. They out of Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, which a lot of people don't uh, know who they are. Six foot five, three hundred thirty pounds. This guy is a massive human being. I saw his highlight. Yeah, he moves a little slow, but he's not there to move quick. He's there to plug up the space in the middle. He's supposed to drive, like drive home, and and, and and when he grabs a hold of that running back, he's slamming him to the turf. He's like, not in my wheelhouse. He's got long, he's got long arms. He's got big hands. He can move quickly for a big boy. Um, does he need? Does he need a little, uh, you know, you know, get stronger with a, a little bit of arm power? May like get, you know, work work on a few things. Yeah, he, of course he is. He's a third round pick, but this is a great pickup. He'll be in the rotational. He'll help with the run game as well. Um, Roderick Martin, what a guy! Like I just saw, I saw his tape. I was like, yeah, this guy is a massive human being. He's gonna plug up the middle, and if he just learns a few more techniques, I think he even he can even rush the the pass rusher. Like he can be a, a valuable pass rusher. And like when a quarterback sees a big boy running at you, like they're gonna panic a little bit. That's gonna open up lanes for like um, Aiden Aiden Hutchinson and uh, James. Um, James Houston, the fourth, and all that. Like, those guys in the bill have openings, right? And John Kaminsky and stuff like that. Um, now, in the fifth round, we go all the way in the fifth round, all the way to the 152nd pick in the NFL draft. The Lions select out of William and Mary Tribe, six foot six, 300 pounds offensive lineman, Kobe uh, Sordal. Sordal. What a guy. This guy plays with a lot of passion. He loves the game of football. He plays without that grit. He's got a car cool fit. He just, he has that knack of just like playing until the whistle. He's, he's just like, he's all about his business. He doesn't quit. He's got like a, he's got a relentless motor like the offensive lineman we got now. Like they, he's the type of guy that he, he's going to come in as, as one of our guards go down or one of our tackles go down. He's going to come in. Right away and like be uh, productive. Is he gonna be like, whoa, this guy's a, a an all pro or all you know a, a a pro level type of offensive line right off the bat? No, he's gonna he's a fifth round pick for a reason, but he's there to plug plug in in case we need somebody to come in and help. So this is gonna help for the future as well. Then finally, at the seventh round pick, at the 219th pick in the NFL draft, the Lions select. Six foot three, two hundred pounds. This guy is pretty tall. Wide receiver Anton Green. This guy is electric. This guy, even though he didn't have a whole lot of yards and a whole lot of touchdowns, but all his catches they had were like 
50-50 balls or he just got behind the defense. Like this guy's got speed. I think he runs like a four, like a four four, four three. Like this guy is quick. But the problem is he needs to work on like his route running a little bit. Maybe he's gotta get a little bit little bit stronger. Um, work on his techniques, maybe get open some more. But this guy's an explosive par uh, player. I saw his highlight. I'm like, whoa, like, this guy is going to help out. Uh, not immediately. He's going to need some. He's going to have to get used to the offense that we have. But I'm pretty sure this guy is going to be something special. Once, once he gets, once he grows, once he grows into that NFL capable uh, wide receiver. So that's what we got. I don't have the list of, like, the, the undrafted free agents. But he did pick up another wide receiver. Uh, they did pick up another running back and the other running back they picked up is like another valuable running back so Lions did re-sign uh, Craig Reynolds for another year just for a backup portion just in case but they got they're gonna have like four running backs on the on the uh, roster so they got a lot to play with I'm really happy about this draft um, a lot of people are kind of like <gasps> it's like why do you why are you drafting a running back linebacker and tight end like the first three picks was well, just Relax. Let's look at in their perspective, right? We can question things because analytics will say you do not draft these guys early, right? But I do like the pick. They fit the cultural, the culture. They fit the uh, the grit. They fit the you know the the I love football attitude. Like they're gonna play 100%. Like give their 100 110% energy, effort in every game. And I, I cannot wait for this team. I think this team got better overall. That's not including the free agency with Cam Sutton, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, um, Emmanuel Mosley, and it's just like Tracy Walker's back. Like we got a lot of we got a lot of guys. That like I know Jamison Williams is like out for six weeks, but we got guys now that they're gonna pick up the pace. It's, we're gonna be fine. Like well, even without Jamo last year and D.J. Shark, we still have top five. Offense alignment, uh, offense, offense in the league. That's behind what Buffalo, uh, the Chiefs, the Bengals, and the Eagles. Like that's crazy. That's crazy how the Lions were top five in the in the uh, in the top five, not top five. Like they're not the best, but they was top five in every mostly categories. They were they wasn't the best in the league at running the ball, but he's eleventh overall. But you can't complain about that. Now before I end this video, I know it's getting kind of long. Let's address the Jared Goff situation. Because I kind of want to make sure you guys understand this. There are there are talks going around. There's some dialogue being spoken between general manager Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, and then quarterback Jared Goff. Now, you guys probably already know what I'm going to talk about next. Um, Jared Goff is on his... So he's got like two more years. I think 2024 is his very last year in the league. I mean, and for Detroit for his contract. And he's getting paid like 27, almost 28 million dollars this year, and like almost 27 million and some change next year, or something like that. I don't really know the figures right now, but he's getting paid. He's getting paid a lot of money. Like he's still gonna get quite a bit of money, or maybe see more than that. I think because what we're sports and that is saying that he's getting paid like 30, like 35, 36 million dollars right now, but. I saw somebody else's video. They had they popped up his thing, and apparently he's like twenty, almost twenty eight, twenty nine million dollars. Yeah, something like that. But he's making quite a bit of money. Like in this day and age, that's not a lot for a quarterback. I mean, look at like Dak Prescott, uh, Car Kyler Murray, uh, Matt Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, like, and even like uh, Daniel Jones. They bought. They all got contracts over forty, over fifth, forty, fifty million dollars a, a year. Even like uh, Derek Carr of the Saints, he signed a big, massive contract. Like Joe Burrow's up next. Um, you got like you got all these other quarterbacks like up for grabs for a contract extension. And Jared Goff is getting up there. They're gonna start the talks. And what's this come down to? The talks is it's like there's a lot of word being out there that said that Lions may extend Goff to a fifty million dollars a year contract. That's a lot of money, but last year, if, if Jared Goff can continue to play this year, you know, on top of his game, it'd be like a top, maybe close to a top five quarterback in the league. Yeah, he's worth that money. Is it going to hurt the Lions a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. But to me, to me, I wouldn't sign him just yet. I know it's cheaper to sign him now 
Then is wait until he has like a like a his like a career year where he blows he blows past his, his 2018 numbers when he led the Rams to the Super Bowl when they eventually lost to Tom Brady and the Patriots. I wouldn't want to sign him right away, but I would not be shocked if they do because every day that it goes by and another quarterback signs a big massive contract. The amount of money that's owed to these quarterbacks for contract extensions or somebody being signed, the money keeps going up and up and up and up. So pretty soon we're going to start seeing guys pushing like $55 million a year, $60 million a year. So it's like it's, it's getting nuts. But the thing is, the quarterback position is the number one thing in the world and in, in the league. If you don't have a quarterback to win in the NFL, like a top tier quarterback, you're not going to do much. Now, you can get by. With a good quarterback, Jared Goff is a good quarterback right now. But if he proves to have another career year and the system works and he has the uh, the firepower around him to make a case, yeah, they would either have to extend him or let him go after this year, and just like you know, we'll bite the bullet. We'll take the twenty million, uh, like a twenty million dollar loss, you know, whatever the case is, and just say we'll move on with uh, uh, Hendon Hooker. But in my opinion. I don't think that it is possible. If Jared Goff can prove that he is the quarterback, he is the guy for Detroit, I wouldn't be shocked if the Lions sign him to like a four or five year contract. He's, he's only 28, guys. He's only 28, 29. People said that's old. You can't be like, what about Aaron Rodgers? What about Tom Brady? What about Drew Brees? What about Matt Ryan? What about, um, who else? Uh, Peyton Manning when he played until he was in his 30, late 30s. Like, all these guys played until like late 30s or in the 40s. Like Tom Brady is like 45 years old when he retired. Yes, he didn't look very good last year. He was really skittish. Like he should have just quit la like the year before that when he won the Super Bowl, right? That one year. I thought he was going to win the Super Bowl with the Buccaneers and leave. But anyways, Jared Goff's only 28. Stop treating him like he's 38. He's got a lot of football left. Like, shoot, Matthew Stafford lasted 12 years for Detroit. And they'll be bat nine, right? He is like 32 years old in his last final year with the Lions. He's won the Super Bowl at age 33. Yes, he got hurt last year at age 34. He'll be back at age 35. He's ready to go for the Rams. Rams are looking fine. Everybody's healthy again. But what about Jared Goff? He's only 28, guys. So it's like, what's well, not? What's well, not throwing the pitchforks and the and the and the and the fire and the torches, right? What's well, not? What's well, not? Get rid of this guy. I think he's going to be good. Let him play out his rest of his contract if you guys don't want to keep him. If you want to extend him, Lions, I see why. Because Jared Goff, the last last year, he was great. Did he have a couple of games where he didn't look very good? Yeah, like he, he struggled at times. But I think with more pieces around him the second half of the season, he, I think they told him, hey, you need to slow down a little bit. Don't rush it. It's like you need to like pick up the pace a little bit because if you're going to be our guy, show us. And he showed all last the, the second half of last year and I hope this year he showcases that hey I am that guy I'm 28 years old I got a lot left in the tank because trust me guys he does so anyways that's all I got for you guys for today I thought I'd just go through the uh, draft what I think of this draft I'm not going to do any draft grades it's an, it's an upgrade from what we had last year for sure like we don't have DeAndre Swift Jamal Williams gone all the, all the free agency guys we signed re -signed or, or signed our back end of the defense is very powerful. It's scary looking. Our linebackers are looking pretty good. Our off defensive line, it's about the same. We do have a couple of new guys in there. I think we'll be fine. They can still address the defensive tackle spot. I think they need to do in the, like, the next batch of free agency, make him pick up another like that. Who is not too old, but he has a lot left in the tank that he can stuff the run and rush the quarterback. That'd be great. They can still sign a, a guy like him that gets caught. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the NFL draft for the Detroit Lions. Are you guys more optimistic about Detroit? You guys think they're still going to finish 98 second in the NFC North? What is your guys' um, – so what is your guys' uh, idea for Detroit? Do you think they're going to win more than nine games? Or do you guys think they're going to win more, more or less than that? Are you guys going to say all oh, their – they're an eight, you know, an eight, nine, nine, eight team. They're not gonna show anything because that's how the Lions are. I would love to know what you guys think about all this. Are you guys more excited for this year or not? Let me know. And uh, yeah, with that said, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I I know it's kind of long, but I want to talk Detroit. Boy, I'm I'm really excited, really hyped to see.
And don't be alarmed if one of these days that Lions go, hey, we just uh You know, we just uh, signed we just signed uh Derek Goff to a uh a big contract, you know, a big old contract. So don't be alarmed because the Lions go, hey, this is our guy, he's our starter. We love Jared Goff, so don't not be afraid, ashamed, or uh, mad, because Brad Holm has told us what he's going to do, and he's done it, right? He drafted a running back. He said, hey, everybody didn't give us crap about drafting Ty, uh, Ty Gurry, right? And look what, what happened. They went, they made it to the playoffs. They won a lot of games. They went to the Super Bowl. Like, Brad, Hol Brad Holm knows what he's doing. Dan Campbell knows. I just, I just hope that Dan Campbell will continue to grow as a head coach because the second half of last year he was brilliant and his coach and his coaching and, and managing the game and i cannot wait so as i said i hope you guys have a wonderful day wonderful night keep on keeping on as always if you guys want more detroit lions stuff if you guys give me a, a drop a few likes subscribe if you're new let me know if you guys are interested because i'll do more of these but if not i'll do them when i when i feel feel like it because this is fun i really enjoyed it so as i said be safe out there be nice to each other and let's go Detroit Lions. Let's go get that division title. Uh, anyways, I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Take care.